Hey everyone, this is Nathan Williams with BlackRun79.com and I'm back here with another micro stakes hand history review for you guys. So as you guys can see, this is one cent, two cent. This hand was played on triple eight poker and it is a full ring cash game minus one player. There's eight players at the table. Uh, this hand was sent to me by Rhinus from Latvia. He's got ace jack of clubs on the button and we will see how the action plays out. So villain five uh, comes in for the limp. I'm not going to go into any reads or anything on him because he doesn't really play any kind of significant role in this hand. Uh, the main villain that we're going to be up against is Villain7. He comes in for the isolation raise there to $0.08. Cents. Uh, now, what should Rhinus do here? What should we do in this spot typically? Well, uh, a lot of it really depends on the read on the player. Uh, so let's jump right into that first. And actually, I should also mention that we need to always look at the stack size as well. He's uh, a little bit shy of uh, 100 big blinds. I don't know what that is, like 80 big blinds to start the hand. Um, it's a small thing, but but if you guys have watched my videos before, you know that uh, I'm always talking about how that can significantly change the way that we play the hand. And also, it is a real tell for somebody who is a recreational player. Players who are serious or, well, there's not really any pros at this level, but just, you know, solid winning regulars typically will always have a full stack. So um, that's definitely something to note. The reads that uh, Rhinus gave me on this guy, this guy is a 38-27-5. That is VPIP, PFR, and aggression factor. And those numbers are, quite frankly, pretty crazy. Like, that's very, very loose aggressive, especially for full rings. So um, and that's over 63 hands, by the way. So this guy's a little bit of a maniac, I would say. I mean, I wouldn't call him... Um, I mean, I, yeah, I would actually almost call him a maniac, to be honest. Um, that, that's quite crazy. So... Um, it's, it's, so it, it's debatable, I would say here with Ace Jacket Clubs, it, it kind of just depends on your variance and, um, how you like to play. I would prefer just a flat call here, especially at NL2, because, uh, number one, I want to keep Villain 5 in the hand as well. I think that's, the, uh, by the way, another tell of, uh, somebody who's probably a recreational player is limping. So I would like to keep Villain 5 in the hand because he's probably got a lot of, uh, you know, crappy hands in his range. Um, if we hit, you know, probably got a lot of worse aces, for instance, in his limping range there. So I'd love for him to come along in the hand. Um, if we three bet here, make it say 24 cents to go, I think villain five is just going to throw away all those, uh, worse aces. And, uh, that's not really a, a good thing for us. Uh, the other thing to note here is we have position in this hand, which is incredibly important. It means we get to act last after every single uh, street after the flop. So, And for those of you guys who have read my first book, Crushing the Micro Stakes, you will know that I'm a big proponent at the, uh, especially the lower stakes like this, of um, really not, not three betting as much pre-flop, trying to keep the pot smaller so that we can exercise our considerable post-flop edge. I think that when you're playing stakes like NL2, NL5, where there's just tons of recreational players everywhere, if you're just three betting and four betting all the time, don't get me wrong, you absolutely should with really premium hands, aces, kings, queens, ace, king, all that stuff. But when you're getting down into ace, jack, suited, and you start three betting all the time with suited connectors and stuff, you're kind of, you're reducing your edge. So really what I like to do is I like to keep the pot as small as possible, unless I have a huge hand, um, like aces, kings, stuff like that. I like to keep the pot smaller so that there's just more room to maneuver after the flop, especially when I'm in position like this. I just feel that I am so much better than these players at poker in general. I'm going to make way better decisions than them. And I feel like when I just jack up the pot pre-flop, you're creating a, a situation post-flop, you're kind of helping them because you've gotten a lot of money in the middle. It, it gives you less room to use your skill advantage. I hope that sort of uh, jumbled uh, <laughs> um, explanation there made sense to you guys. Anyway, so uh, Rhinus does uh, decide to just call here. So I, uh, I like that decision and Villain5 uh, comes on for the ride as well. So let's go to the flop here. So we uh, we nail the flop pretty good with uh, the old top pair, good kicker, and the backdoor nut flush draw. So everything's looking good. So villain five decides to check, and villain seven comes in for the c bet of twenty cents. So what should we do here? Well, uh, again, considering the player type that we're up against, the loose and aggressive player, I think it's a, a fairly interesting spot. I think that you definitely could raise here, but I think that that will also lose a lot of the hands that he's bluffing with, unless he has some sort of draw or something. So I actually kind of like uh, Rhinus's decision to just call here. I'd, I'd kind of be a bigger fan of maybe raising the turn in a situation like this, depending on the turn card. So the turn comes with three of spades, and uh, Villain7 decides to 
uh, bet again. Uh, super interesting spot. Um, I was just talking about potentially uh, jamming the turn on against a player like this. Remember, we're playing against a maniac here. I'm not. There, there's no way that I'm putting this guy on ace king, ace queen, or something. That's obviously a small part of his range, but it's a very, very small part of his range when he's raising 27% of hands preflop. I mean, he's got any ace here. Uh, of course, there's you know there's a, a fair number of aces that do beat us now, but there's also a lot of aces that we're still beating. Um, and there's all sorts of just nonsense bluffs, nonsense draw, uh, just ridiculous draws that he can still be on. Um, he could even just be going crazy with pocket tens or something, or seven six or anything of this sort with a player like this. So um, I would say it's pretty close on the turn here. Um, I don't mind this, Rhinus's decision to call it. I think the decision is fine. I, I, I'm. I think that you could potentially jam in a spot like this, though, for value as well. Um, so I think it can kind of go either way on the turn here. So we come to the river, and the river is that old, always the fun one, puts the uh, puts the one-liner to a straight on the board, one card to a straight. He's got any seven or two in his hand now, we lose. Um, what does Villain do? He jams. Ah, jeez. So this is... Um, it's a pretty ugly spot, I'm not going to lie. Um, you're kind of just uh, hoping that, that this guy's kind of on a stone cold bluff at this point because it, it this creates a situation where we're not beating as many hands now. I mean, like I said, if he's got any set. And we talked about the, the range before that he could have hands like 7-6. He could have uh, could have had ace-deuce. He could have all, all, all sorts of stuff like this. So um, it's a pretty gross spot. I'm not going to lie, guys. Um, could I fold here... Yeah, I, I think I probably would lean a little bit to more more towards a fold here. Um, just because, and, and I will say that I have already seen the results of the hand. It's always easy, easy game poker when you know the results. Um, but I just want to give you my explanation here. Um, yeah, the guy's a maniac. But as I just said, there's not really a ton that we're beating on the river here you need to ask yourself is this guy really going to go ace nine and just go crazy like this or ace eight probably not i think i, I know he's a crazy maniac and everything i, I he's going to have some bluffs there's no question he will show up with some bluffs, but it's just it's how often will he have those i think we're getting almost three to one on this call here so it's a little bit enticing but i do think that we're probably going to be behind more often than not the other thing to remember is yeah, we talk about maniacs and stuff in poker, but maniacs can make hands too. Bottom line, it's kind of a close spot. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. I'm sure this is a spot you guys have been in many times before. Sometimes you're going to call here and he's going to flip over something we like, but sometimes he's going to flip over something completely ridiculous like this. And I think that uh, Rhinus said that uh, this hand kind of set him off on tilt a little bit, and I can definitely see how that can happen. Um, guys, this is the kind of crazy, crazy stuff that you're going to see at the, at the lower limits sometimes. People keep saying that everybody's solid at the lower stakes. I think they're doing drugs. I had, do they play poker? Do they, I mean, do you see what, what's going on these days, guys? Yeah, games are all dead. Nobody's, everybody's solid. Um, <laughs> this is a crazy hand, obviously. Um, and, and this is the kind of stuff you see sometimes. It's really, really important when stuff like this happens to not allow this to set you off. Um, obviously is a really bad player who got lucky, extremely lucky in this hand. Um, you know, if something like this really gets to you, it's a, a good idea. It can be, I, I, I talk about this of just, just taking a break. Just, you don't have to quit for the day, but just, um, close the table. Just, just sit out immediately and go just walk around for five, 10 minutes or something like that. And just make sure that when this stuff happens to you, as it absolutely will at these stakes, you can't avoid these guys, man. Uh, this stuff happens. This is why we can have such a big win rate at these stakes. That's why, what you also need to remember. Um, but it's very, very important that you don't allow a hand like this to um, influence your future decisions and you know cause you to throw away a lot more stacks in future hands against this player or somebody else. Because quite frankly, that's probably the number one reason why people lose in poker is because a hand like this makes something in their brain go crazy. And look, I'm not like some superhuman or something. This stuff drives me insane as well. It'll drive anybody insane. But this is really, um, I think the most important part of this hand, honestly, is how we react to this nonsense. Like, it, this that's the most important thing here. Could Rhinus have made better decisions throughout the hand? I don't know. I think it's up in the air. Like I said, you guys can leave your comments below. Um, 
possibly could have 3-bet preflop, possibly could have jammed the turn, possibly could have raised the flop. There's obviously different ways to play the hand, but I, I don't think that um, there's anything particularly wrong with the way that this hand was played. We're against a maniac at NL2. We got incredibly lucky. And I, I think that really the most important thing uh, that you guys hopefully take away from this hand is don't let something like this drive you crazy and put you on tilt and cause you to just start going you know crazy for the next hour and throw away like 5, 10 stacks. Because that's what everyone else is doing, and that's why they lose at poker. You're better than that. So, yeah, hopefully that's the, the lesson here. All right, um, that's about all I got for this hand, guys. Like I said, uh, let me know your comments uh, below what you guys think about this hand. So if you guys want to see more hands like this, make sure you like the video and subscribe to my channel. I'm always putting out hands like this on my YouTube channel here for the lower stakes, stakes that you guys are actually playing. Uh, and lastly, make sure you check out uh, my free ebook. It's called Massive Profit and the Micros. It's the link, the top link in the description below. You can download it's a free 50 page ebook and it will give you my complete strategy on how I crush these stakes. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. It's been Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com.